Hey there, Ryan here. After months of waiting, it's finally time. The Analog NT Mini Noir is here. Okay, so Analog is a company that creates vintage gaming consoles with contemporary hardware using an FPGA chipset. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So back in March, they opened up pre-orders for the NT Mini Noir, the last run of a system that recreates the original NES and Famicom hardware. And I was really on the fence at the time if I wanted to put in a pre-order for this, but I opted to do so at the very last minute, and I'm very glad I did. Now this was originally supposed to be shipping back in the summer, but due to production delays, they had to push things back till November, and eventually just this past week here, the console arrived, and I'm really excited to unbox it and share that experience with you all here today. Well, let's check it out. All right, so here we have the box still in its original plastic. So we can go ahead and slice that open here. And peel it off. And the box is a really nice soft matte finish here. Like this beautiful matte black. It's very minimalistic, but you can actually see the analog logo on the box as well too. We'll open up the box and inside we have our console looking really nice here. This gorgeous gunmetal finish. There's our front with the four controller ports, so we don't need a four score adapter to play Bomberman 2. And the back side here with all of the IO connectivity you could ever want. We'll set that down. And let's take a look and see what's underneath the rest of the foam packaging here. Looks like we've got a few goodies inside. We have the Welcome to Analog little starting guide here. Okay, we'll set that away. We've also got inside the power adapter. Pull that out. We've got some cables here as well too, an HDMI cable. And then a USB charging cable, that's to charge the controller. And then here's the controller itself. Very fitting. These 8-bit dough controllers have always treated me well. And then we have an adapter here. That's a 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter to plug into the controller port. And all of these are the different uh, heads for the worldwide power adapter. So we'll just pick out the North American head and get rid of the rest there. Super. Okay. Well, unboxed, here is the console, the box, the controller in all its glory. All right, so now that we've unboxed this, I'd like to share my overall impressions and opinions on the hardware. And honestly, I think this is a really beautiful console. I'm really enjoying it so far. The hardware feels premium, as it should. You can tell a lot of love and attention to detail went into the production of this. It gives you a simple user interface that lets you enjoy games right away but it also gives you a lot of options to customize things like audio and video settings. I love that it just works. I really enjoy playing original carts from my NES collection, but it can be a hassle to set up old consoles on current generation TVs, and even if you do, the picture quality just isn't there. Keeping a CRT around is also a good idea for using older consoles, but the screens can be small and still very bulky, even when you're using original hardware, it can often be difficult to get games to read. That hasn't been the case with the NT Mini. Now, there are other consoles on the market that will let you plug in an NES cart and play it over your TV on an HDMI connection. So what makes the NT Mini any different? Well, most of those consoles are actually just fancy emulators. Essentially, when you plug in a cartridge into the console, it copies the ROM file of the cartridge to the emulator on the console and it lets you play the game. There's not much difference you'd get in doing this versus just playing the game on any other computer emulator, really. So what does the NT Mini do? Well, it uses an FPGA, or a Field Programmable Gate Array. Basically, it's a chip that has the capacity to be reprogrammed to copy the functions of another CPU. It's essentially able to reproduce the CPU of an original NES, but can be configured to allow for new options. Now, as of the time of making this, the only way to get your hands on the console is from others who pre-ordered with the intent to resell. 
eBay has the system going for $800 to $1,000 Canadian, and I can't imagine prices are going down anytime soon. So is it worth it? Well, if you already picked one of these up, odds are you're a hobbyist collector, like myself, and hopefully you'll be really happy with the console. I know I am. If you're thinking of getting one from a reseller, ask yourself if it's really worth the cost for you. There are a lot of ways to play NES games today, but this one's really unique, and clearly there's a market for it. I plan to be streaming more NES games this month and onwards, so swing by the Twitch page if you want to come out or ask me any questions about the console. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.